Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a Dreadfx custom build. Now this is Don't Buy One, Make One. We are going to be building an arcade console, a tabletop one. As you can see in the picture there, this is one that's got the joysticks and all the buttons and the TV in it. The one that I've built is for a retro games console. It was for a PlayStation 2. You can put whatever console you want into this. You could put a PS5, an Xbox, an old Sega of your choice. It's just, I think it's just a really cool design you can have on a table. It's all Bluetooth speaker set up. You'll get to see this at the end of the video if you stick around. I'll give you a little tour and you'll see it all working and how it sounds and things like that. Now, if you wanted to go and build one of these, you can buy these. I'll put a picture up on the screen now. This is one I sourced on e eBay and looked up the price. These go for around £70 upwards to buy a flat pack version of what we're going to build. And I thought for £70 to build that cabinet, I could build one a lot cheaper for the price of a, I'll put it up in the screen, for a sheet of MDF, eight foot by four foot sheet, you can build one of these consoles out of, not a problem at all. A sheet of MDF will cost you about £22 for a 12 mil thickness sheet of MDF, and that's what I use to do this build. So the pieces that you're gonna need, if you wanna go ahead and build one of these, quite sort of basic materials that you'll need and tools. You'll need a drill, a jigsaw. I used a air nail gun because I've got one from previous. You don't have to use an air nail gun, you can just use screws. A box of drill bits with all your different size drill bits in. That's just a cheap one that was a 14.99 set and you've got like, it's a 250 piece in there. Some wood glue, we've got some in inch wood screws, a metal ruler, we've got pencils, a sharper, a scalpel, I've got a bradle just to mark some holes when you're drilling through, a staple gun with some staples, and I think that's about all that I use for this build. As I say, this build was done three years ago, so I'm just like searching around this morning, I found the actual plans that I used, I saved them for the shapes, so I can give you a quick look at them. So I started off with an eight foot by four foot sheet of MDF. And then as you can see on that picture in the screen, I'm looking to do the side shape of the actual cabinet. So I've got a piece of paper here and basically hand drew the shape out. So you've got that for the side panel. I cut two of those. So if you start off with that shape, just mark one up on a piece of paper, start off with that shape, and then your width of the cabinet all depends on what size TV you're gonna put in it. And the best place to look for TVs is second-hand stores. The TV that I picked up in it was a Samsung, a flat screen Samsung, 22 inch. So I was looking at about 24 inches center on the inside. And then what you're doing is you are basically cutting your two side panels out, as you can see on the screen there, out the MDF, and then you're going for, I went for a 24 inch centers. So where you've got the holes on that cabinet there, that's where I was cutting the width of the 24, and then I've got my depth of what I need, and I can just work off 24 wide and making a cabinet to go with the two side panels on. So I'll move on to the next picture. This will be jumping forward. Now that's the cabinet that I built. As you can see, it's got the sides and then on that flat panel, that's 24 across and that's about 10 to 11 inches depth on that. We've got the TV marked up. So you're basically putting the TV onto the MDF panel, drawing around it and then you're cutting that shape out and you're making like a picture frame to go around the TV, nice and simple. Next picture is a front on view of that and as you can see on the bottom you've just got an open void. Now I left that open so you can slide the PlayStation 2 or whatever games console that you're going to use, you can slide that in that little gap underneath and you can put your controllers or you can store your games next to the side of it underneath that edge there. To the top you've got the overhang 
and underneath there in that picture you can see two round grills now they were the speaker grills to go underneath on the cabinet i'm moving on to the next picture now that's the actual speakers on that overhang just the grills put in place that gap there them speakers are about three inches so you're coming out on overhang gap of about five inches on that and you've got the round speaker grills i'm moving on to the next picture now that's the top of the cabinet and that's just a box so you're looking at about six to seven inches from the front face and then you see the two speakers inside and then to the back you've got that backboard that comes up that's about eight inches depth going back and then you've got the speakers inside i'm moving to the next one now that's the actual inside at the back so the tv is in place i've just put a batten across on the inside to hold the tv up on the inside and then put a brace across the back and that just angles and holds the tv from falling back you can see you've got all the wires in there so the wires go inside the cabinet up the side and into where the speakers are and i've just got the staple gun a little bit of underlay foam that you'd use for under your carpets and things like that cut a piece of that out and stapled that in move on to the next picture these are jumping quite forward so i'm going to try and talk you through as much as i can now as you can see this is basically a dry fit on this photo here we've got the tv in place so as you can see that tv has basically got a frame of mdf around it so we've gone 24 wide drop the TV in, we've got the frame around the TV, and that's the shape, the sort of look we're working from. We've got the flat panel below the television, and then underneath that flat panel to the, what would be your right or left. It's hard to sell, because I'm looking at a picture here. You've got your PlayStation 2 in that void at the bottom, nice and easy, and on the overhang, you can see the speaker grills. I've just dropped some masking tape on them just to hold them in place. Now on that picture, you can see we've got gray, round the edges now i was just priming the edges of the mdf up now if you've not worked with mdf before the edges can get quite fair so they were all sand back down the grays to about 500 and then i just put aerosol primer gray primer and just started to prime the edges up let it soak leave it to dry and just build the layers up on the edges of that mdf in the next photo you can see the void at the bottom and the playstation 2 is in place this is just like a test fit for every piece so your playstation 2 or whatever games console can fit in there nice and easy the bonus with the playstation 2 is the drawer when you eject it the drawer comes out and you can put your discs in and out so if you are using one of the old playstation ones you could cut the actual on the flat piece at the top you could mount the playstation one in there so when you pop the lid up you can put your discs in at the top choose your console guys so that's what i choose was the ps2 nice and easy in the next photo there you go that's the overhang for the speaker grills you can see they're masking taped up they're just in place and that's the tv all nicely fitted in next photo there's another one again of the actual whole piece together now we're moving on to the primer stage. Now in this picture, I've took all the pieces out, gave this a light sand down all over, and I've used the Iwata Black Flash 1.8, and I've used uh, Mipa 2K High Build Primer. Give this about three to four coats of primer, let that go off for like a day. Move on to the next picture. There's another picture of the primer. That's the top part of the cabinet in primer. There's a side shot, the next one in the primer. So that's all primed, basically just primed the sides and the front and the back was left because the back was just going up to a wall where it's been placed. So that's all the cabinet in primer. Moving on and we've jumped forward. Now, as you can see in this picture, it's got a lot of artwork on it. Now, I was basing this cabinet off Resident Evil because it was one of my old favorite PlayStation games now to get this pattern as you can see here i'll move on to the next picture there's another one close up i sprayed the cabinet in silver i used the iwater impact junior and sprayed it all in silver base coat 
and then got the stencil of the checker plate and started airbrushing all the checker plate in. So the checker plate went in after the silver base. Nice and simple. I have got a video on my channel guys on metal effects. So if you want a more in-depth look at how to get this effect, there is a video on the channel guys. So we've done the checker plate silver on the front and then you can see the red now they're like on the actual game there's a lot of, it's, it's quite a gory game so i was using red paint and basically putting my hand in a bowl of red paint and then just sliding it down the actual cabinet to give it that look as though someone's been grabbing hold of it as you can see there there's another shot just basically a handprint of red paint and then just done some splatters on the sides nice and simple just create your own textures as you're going along moving on to the next picture picture that's the actual face plate so you've got the umbrella corporation which is on the game the little logo to the side and i've just done some more smears with the the red like the blood effect on there moving on you've got this is the top part of the cabinet where the speakers are underneath and i've dropped the resident evil logo across the top nice and easy just cut that out with transfer paper or you could make a stencil out of paper or cardboard place it on the top of the cabinet spray through in white and i've just done a little outline in black with the airbrush now as you can see them runs that are coming down that look like it just make it look a little bit more evil the way i did that is you can get this glue here and this glue is a polyurethane glue <clears throat> It's not expensive these for 500 i think it's 500 mil 750 grams this works out to about 18 pounds but it lasts ages guys you don't need a lot and basically what you're doing is you're running that down the cabinet at the top and when this dries this glue foams up the actual glue is water resistant it's solvent proof so i thought it'd be a good idea to put some textures in with the glue We've made the glue run down, let that go off, and then I've sprayed that in like a candy green over the top just to give it that little bit more effect. I'll move on to the next picture. That's the front, so you've got the Resident Evil. I've mounted the TV in, so it's all complete. And in the next picture, there's one with the open cabinet again with the TV out, just shows you a little bit more. And then in this picture, that is the actual finished piece. Now that was all the artwork completed. I didn't clear coat this, I used a satin. It's basically, it looks like PVA glue. When you paint, paint it on, it's like a white and it's a satin sealer. You can use it for walls. You see a lot of people use this sealer for doing wall art, they'll airbrush on the walls. Mm and then you can seal it, roller it on. And I just painted a satin finish and that just sealed all the artwork in instead of going through the clear coat stages and chucking loads and loads of clear coat at it. I just wanted to keep this build as cheap as possible. So that's the actual finished piece. There is more bits, but you'll see them at the end of the video. There's the Bluetooth system that goes on this. And I've mounted some Perspex that goes in front of the TV screen, but you'll see it at the end. So quite a simple build. It may look really complicated, but they're not. The artwork stages take the longest, <clears throat> but the actual build is quite straightforward. Once you get your two side panels, that shape cut, and then you can basically, you're making boxes of MDF that go inside that. You've got a back plate, a bottom plate, you put your sides on, and you're basically moving a little cabinet with two sides and then you can start fitting your TV. You've got your opening at the front so you can slide your console in and it's just a really cool bit of kit guys and it sounds really really good with the Bluetooth system that's going in it. I'll just drop a picture of that up now. Now these are nice and cheap. You've got a dial to the top on these and You've got your speaker terminals, as you can see in that photo now, you've got the gold terminals coming out the back. You can run two speakers out of this. And actual, just pulling the picture up now. You've got on the front, as you can see, you've got the USB sound part there, auxiliary, 
on off switch it's bluetooth so you can put your phone to it the way i wired this one up i went on the auxiliary ran the 3.5 jack out the tv headphone socket so you run it out the tv headphone socket round and plug it into the auxiliary if you wanted to listen to music you just unclip the auxiliary and you're instantly linked to bluetooth and you can listen to bluetooth so that's what i used these are coming out at around 41 pounds now because this is the newer version i've got the older version and it's not got that usb sound part on the front the sound part the usb sound card slot it's not got that on it mine's the older version but you'll see that in a minute so that's the build i'll pan around in the camera now and i'll show you all this working right there you go guys there's the finished arcade bar top i've put some duller lights down so when the screen fires up you'll be able to see it a little bit clearer but that's the build we've got the perspex to the front and that's just on like locators with screws through and just raise slightly out over the screen just to protect the screen you've got your speakers to the top and there is an actual tweeter that i've put in as well in the center coming down we've got the remote, remote control for the tv so if you wanted to plug it into an aerial or something like that you've got your remote switches and all that for your television just there or a piece of perspex that just sits nice your controller PlayStation in that little void I told you about underneath and your controller can sit in there and you can have a little stack of games at the side nice and compact you've got your Bluetooth little amp that I've shown you in them photos all the wires go inside round and they're all channeled round in the back of the cabinet I've done a little perspex piece on the top again with a hole cut out so the volume control comes through and then you've got your little red 3.5 jack that just comes through the top of the cabinet piece there and if you wanted to listen to tv or playstation you go through your auxiliary that goes through into the headphone jack on the tv nice and simple you just plug that in when you take that out it instantly fires up to bluetooth so if i plug that in now you'll hear it Just do that again. Bluetooth mode. AUX mode. It talks to you and tells you what input you've got. So I'll just pull that out and it should go Bluetooth. Bluetooth mode. And that's linked to Bluetooth. So it's nice and simple. Good bit of kit. Sounds really cool. So what I'll do is I'll fire the PlayStation up. I won't play the actual music on the PlayStation game because it's more than likely got copyright. So I'll fire up. A copyright free track and then you can just watch the picture for a bit and you'll see it running guys the nice thing about this when you've got the speakers in the overhang here when you're sitting in front of it gaming the sound just bellows out down this way and bounces off this piece here and hits you square in the face so it's really cool when you're playing a game just like being in one of the arcades so we'll fire the PlayStation up just let that kick in as you know the old-school games consoles take a while to fire up and load up it's not like your new stuff where you press it and it's instant you can go and make a cup of tea by the time this thing fires up but it's kicking in there you go there's the, there's the original ps2 screen and i've just got the cool borders um disc in and i'll just drop some music with that <laughs> I don't know how this sound's going to come across here, but this feels really cranked up, guys.
So there you go, it's all working. It's not been fired up for a good couple of years. And you just plug it in and it just fires up. Good old technology, it always works. The new stuff is temperamental. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the arcade build, the Resident Evil cabinet. I hope you've learned something along the way on this build. As I say, they're nice and simple guys. You're not gonna make it complicated. And simple DIY tools. Like I say, once you get your outer shapes done, then you make your little boxes on the internal to fit your TV. All the wires, the TV wires, so you've got the TV power for the PlayStation, the power for the TV. There's an extension lead inside the box mounted on the side. On the back panel of this cabinet, I've got an air vent, so there's no heat buildup because you've got a gap here and that goes through to the back and then you've got an air gap in the back so it's like nice circulation so nothing gets hot I've had this room for hours and hours and it's been absolutely fine guys so hope you enjoyed it big welcome to all the new subscribers and thank you so much for all the comments guys much appreciated and I will see you in the next one thanks for watching